Welcome to Odds on Premier League, brought to you by Oddspedia. Today I'm joined by Tom Williams, a football writer and broadcaster. We're here to bring you the best odds, tips and predictions on match day eight of the Premier League. If you enjoy the show, please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And now, on with the show. Welcome to Odds on Premier League. Today I'm joined by Tom Williams, broadcaster and football writer. Tom, welcome. Hi Tom, how's it going? Very well, very well. We'll uh, get straight into it with Friday evening's action. We've got Brighton against Burnley to uh, kick us off in the Premier League. Burnley, uh, they've lost last uh, six of the last seven. Um, they've only scored once in their last five. It's uh, well known, it's their worst start uh, to a season in their history, not just in the Premier League. Uh, meanwhile, Brighton, they've only got two points from their last five. Um, how do you see this one going? I think one thing to say about Burnley is that they've made slow starts to seasons before and then at some point things have clicked, they've picked up points, they've gone on a run. I wouldn't put them, I wouldn't put it past them doing the same thing this season. Having said that, I've been bigging up Brighton since the start of the season. I, I think they don't have the points on the board that their performances uh, merit. Um, and they they took four points off Burnley last season. They beat them on the final day of the campaign. Um, so I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to back, uh, I'm back a Brighton win in this one. OK, um, you can get a Brighton win at 1.93 on Oddspedia. Also, if you look at the goals market, under 1.5 goals is around 3.7. Um, so if you're looking for a, a low scoring affair. And also a, a goal of straw, nil nil, is actually uh, 10.75. So you know, if, you, if you don't fancy goals in this game, um, then there's, there's, your, uh, there's your market. Um, later on in, on the Friday evening, we have Saints against Newcastle. Uh, obviously, Southampton are in great form. Uh, they're unbeaten in five. They've actually been in superb form since lockdown or lockdown one. Um, they've scored more than two or two or more in their last four home games. But of course, now they're probably going to be out. Um, Danny Ings is probably not going to be included in their in their squad because he's picking up that injury last time out. Um, if we look at Newcastle on the other side, obviously Cal Wilson's really dragging Bruce's Magpies up the table. He's, he's got six goals now, I think, in, in, in a few, seven games or something like that. Um, but they have had the fewer shots on target in the Premier League. So will that balance out? Or, or do you think from this one, Saints might win this one quite comfortably? How do you, how do you see it? When did you say Southampton are on a really decent run of form, five games unbeaten and they've won the last two uh, quite impressively at home to Everton and then that crazy win. 4-3 away at Villa last weekend when they were actually uh, much more comfortable than the scoreline suggested with Villa getting two late goals. Um, Newcastle coming into this game off their own home win over Everton, which not too many people saw coming, but they're a team who concede an awful lot of chances. They allow more shots on their goal per game than any other team in the Premier League. They're particularly vulnerable at set pieces. And we saw at Villa Park last weekend how dangerous Southampton can be from set pieces with the delivery of, of James Ward-Prowse and, and some of their big centre-backs coming up uh, from the back. No Danny Ings would be a miss, but I still think Southampton have, have got enough for this. And uh, you can get odds of 11 on a 2-0 Southampton home win on Oddspedia. Well, uh, if Ward Prowse hits those free kicks like he was doing last week, then uh, another good chance for, for Saints in, in Friday night's action. Um, moving into to Saturday's early kickoff, it's Everton versus Manchester United. Uh, United have won their last six away games. They must be delighted that they're not at Old Trafford again this week. Um, of course, the Toffees, their form slightly dipped since their, since their early season rise to the summit. Um, you can get odds of a draw around 3.7, which clearly means that the bookies are struggling to split them uh, on Saturday early early afternoon. Um, and if you just look at Solskjaer's side, to come from behind, um, they've done that in the last two away games, and you can get that at 11.5. How do you see this one uh, playing out on Saturday? I think a draw is probably a solid bet in this one. Two teams who are short of form. Everton, whose early season momentum has fizzled out a little bit. They're three games of that win and two consecutive defeats. 
United, who've been great in the Champions League, but have really struggled, uh, particularly at home in the Premier League. They've got quite a, a poor recent record at Goodison Park as well. They've only won on two of their last eight visits and they've succumbed to a few quite one-sided defeats during that period. So although United's form on the road has tended to be better, I think the fact that Everton are going to be looking for a reaction as well means that uh, I think this will be quite close. OK, well, yeah, I mean, uh, 3.7, as we said, for the draw, you can get odds of three for Everton and uh, United. The bookies do give United, uh, uh, pose them as favourites at 2.5, but I think we're both opting for a, a middle ground there as, as a draw. Um, and moving on to Crystal Palace at uh, Palace against Leeds. Uh, Palace have scored more than one home goal just once in 2020. Um, Leeds have scored three goals away from home in three of the last four, of course. Um, that's going back to the, the Leeds game, but the, the Villa game and also against Liverpool. For me, this has got actually um, quite a low scoring affair uh, written all over it. Um, Palace, I think, are the sort of side that are going to try and keep it tight against Leeds and, and um, under 2.5 goals, you can get it 1.8. Interestingly, these, this is actually the, um, the two oldest managers in the league coming Coming face to face, um, what can what can we expect at, at Selhurst? I mean, it'll be a clash of styles if you look at Roy Hodgson, who tends to set Palace up uh, to, to counter attack, and then Marcelo, Marcelo Bielsa, who of course uh, has this sort of all out attack approach with Leeds. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Leeds are quite a dangerous prospect on the road. Uh, we've seen that most of their most impressive performances this season have been away from home. They give they give Liverpool that big scare at Anfield on the opening weekend. They've won away at Sheffield United. They've won away very impressively at Villa Park. Um, going into this game on the back of that heavy 4-1 defeat at home to Leicester. But I think uh, the fact that they do pose that sort of threat on the road and the fact that Palace are generally happier when they're playing away from home uh, mm -hmm. than at Southhurst Park means I can see Leeds winning this one and you can get odds of uh, 8.5 or thereabouts on, on Oddspedia for Leeds to win both halves in this one. Wow, that's big money. That's, that would be uh, that'd be great for Bielsa and, and his men. Interestingly, just one thing to point out in terms of uh, bookings, uh, Bielsa's men have received uh, the first booking of the game in their last seven games, uh, and also Palace have had a red card in their last three games at home. So I don't know whether there's going to be anything uh, anything untoward on the pitch, but there are certainly some uh, some bookings to be seen uh, in, in recent weeks for both clubs. Uh, also on Saturday, we've got Chelsea versus Sheffield United. Um, as we all know, the Blades are on a pretty torrid run at the moment, so they lost nine of their last ten. Um, also scored the fewest in the league. Um, interestingly, they have been keeping the majority of their matches quite close. They haven't lost by, um, they've lost by just one goal in five of their last six. Um, Chelsea haven't lost in five and they've sort of started to begin to sort out their defence and the, the players seem to be, who've come in during the summer, have started to gel. Um, for me, I can see Chelsea probably running away with this one. Uh, you get an Asian handicap, minus two of 3.10 odds. Is that the sort of game that you can expect at the bridge, Tom? Yeah, I think so. I mean, as you say, Sheffield United still without a victory this season and, and you know, it looks like a real case of second season syndrome. Against that, as, as you quite rightly point out, they have looked a little bit more solid in recent weeks. Uh, they gave Liverpool a really good game at Anfield, only went down 2-1. They only lost 1-0 at home to Manchester City last weekend, so they're perhaps a little bit less gettable than they looked in the season's opening weeks. But, you know, the flip side of that is that Chelsea looking in, in good form. Edouard Mendy has come in between the posts and made a huge impact. Three consecutive clean sheets in his first three Premier League appearances. Um, their summer signings are all coming into the team. We saw Hakim Ziyech impress last weekend uh, on his first league start. So I think this should be a fairly comfortable home win here. Uh, you can get a 3-0 win if you're looking at that at 11.0 uh, if you want to bang on the, uh, the, the correct score there. Um, moving into Saturday evening, uh, it's uh, West Ham versus Fulham. Um, Fulham, of course, haven't won uh, haven't won 21 of the last 22 away games. If we go back into their uh, first Premier, well, their last Premier League stint, um, West Ham has shown plenty of good form against Liverpool, City, Spurs, and Leicester, of course. But now they really need to actually get the points on the board because they are towards the bottom half of the table, despite those those good performances. Um, I think this is a good chance to do so. What, what about you? Yeah, I mean, West Ham have, have come through a really tricky run of fixtures and, and they don't look in, in, in 
too bad shape. Um, there, there was that fantastic late fight back to, to rescue a, a point in that 3-3 draw at Spurs. They held Manchester City to a draw at home and, and gave Liverpool a, a decent game uh, last weekend, losing 2-1. And They've got those two quite impressive wins against Wolves and, and Leicester under their belts already this season, which shows what a dangerous team they can be. Um, Fulham, on the other hand, broke um, uh, their duck this season by beating West Brom last time out, and I think that'll give them a, a lot of a lot of optimism. So I think what we've got here are, are two quite buoyant teams, and I, I can see there being goals in this. You can get. Uh, odds of 3.9 uh, on Oddspedia for there being 3.75 goals or more. And I think the fact that both teams are going into this with a bit of momentum and a sense that this is a game that they should get points from uh, means that it could be entertaining. That would be a great watch if we can actually get two teams uh, firing on, on all cylinders there on, on the Saturday evening kickoff. Moving into Sunday, uh, it's West Brom versus Spurs. Spurs are up to third. The title challenge is back on. Or is it? Who knows? Um, Jose's men ground out that win against Brighton, the type of uh, match or performance where they would probably have dropped points uh, in previous seasons. Um, West Brom, on the other hand, obviously they, they've got the worst goal difference in the league. That, As you mentioned, that defeat to Fulham last time out could be um, quite pivotal for them. Um, do you think that Bale can, can come into the team and fill his boots here at the Hawthorns? It'll be interesting to see if, if he does start because obviously, you know, came off the bench to score the winner against Brighton last weekend. And I think a lot of Spurs fans and a lot of neutrals are, are really excited about the prospect of seeing him and Harry Kane and Son Heung Min all starting at the same time. I tend to think that whichever attack Jose Mourinho goes with this weekend, um, Spurs are going to end up winning this one. As you say, West, West Brom's form is, is pretty wretched. Uh, Spurs have been fantastic away from home this season. Three wins from three. Um, I don't see that changing at the Hawthorns. Um, and you can get odds of 13 on a 3-0 Spurs win. And I think that's the sort of margin of victory we could be looking at here. Yeah, but I'm in agreement there with you. Um, in terms of Spurs winning both halves, I've also noted down at 3.8. Um, and I can really see, yeah, I think we're both in agreement that Spurs' uh, firepower could be too much for the baggies there on, on Sunday. Um, Leicester versus Wolves. Uh, you know, speaking of title charges, uh, you know, Brennan's Foxes are up to second after their 4 1 win uh, over Leeds. Uh, Vardy's back and he's looking dangerous every time he steps foot onto the pitch. Um, speaking, of Will, uh, speaking of Wolves, um, their games this season have only seen um, over 2.5 goals three times actually in 17 matches. So that's going over to last season as well. Um, I'm tipping a draw at around 3.4, 3.3. Um, do you see this one being a, a close, tight affair, or, or, or you know, how do you see it? I agree. I think it'll be quite a close one. Uh, I mean, Leicester go into this game off the back of two really impressive performances, winning one 0 away at Arsenal uh, and then four one away at Leeds uh, in the Monday night game. But most of their best performances uh, have come. Uh, on the road this season and they've been disappointing occasionally at home. They lost 3-0 at home to West Ham and 1-0 at home to Villa in their most recent home fixtures. Wolves are really tightened things up um, in the last few uh, the last few matches. Uh, three clean sheets in the last four games. They're a team who can play effectively on the counter-attack. Um, so I, I can see this being quite close and I, I think a draw is probably a decent bet. OK, moving on to Sunday, probably the big game of the weekend, certainly in the Premier League at least. Uh, it's Manchester City versus Liverpool. Um, Liverpool have scored at least two in their last nine Premier League games, uh, but then City have kept a clean sheet in seven of their last nine home games. Um, you know, there's lots of excitement, lots of anticipation. Do you think they'll cancel each other out? I mean, for me, looking at Liverpool's odds, uh, for the league champions to be around 3.6, even 3.5, that's surely the highest, the highest odds they'll be all season. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. The first meeting of, of the top two of the last couple of seasons, um, and you know, both of them have have impressed at times um, this season, and other times have looked short of their best. I think an interesting trend in recent games has been that City quite often score first, but then struggle to to build on that. We saw that in their most recent away game at at West Ham, um, where they went ahead but couldn't build on it. Um, well, hang on, is that what happened or am I getting that the wrong way around? Anyway, regardless, City have, have 
have taken the lead at times this season and been un unable to build on it and have sort of faded out of matches. Liverpool in recent weeks, it's been the opposite. Um, in both the 2-1 uh, the win at home to Sheffield United and the 2-1 win at home to West Ham, they conceded first but then came back to win. Uh, we saw in the Champions League in, in midweek with that fantastic 5-0 win away at Atalanta, uh, Diogo Jota getting a hat-trick, uh, you know, how much firepower they boast. Uh, and if you were to back uh, City to take the lead, but Liverpool to come from behind and win, uh, you could get odds uh, of 14 uh, on Oddspedia for that. And, and given the way the two teams have performed in recent weeks, that might not be too bad a bet. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, their uh, impressive showing in Europe might solidify that a choice of Jota being in the, in the starting lineup against City. But yeah, they, they certainly look pretty, uh, pretty powerful up front at the moment with those three. Uh, going as the Trident. Um, final game on Sunday is Arsenal versus Villa. Uh, Villa, of course, tumbling down the table now. They've lost 3-0 and 4-3 to Leeds and Saints. Um, they had obviously a great start to the season. Gunners historically do very well against Villa. Um, in the last decade, they've won 13 of the last 17 in all, uh, in all competitions. Um, but of course, Dean Smith's men have produced many upsets this season. Do you think they can pull off another? Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting this one. I mean, as you say, Villa's form has, has fallen away slightly. We know what a dangerous team they can be in attack. We saw that in that incredible 7-2 win over Liverpool with, with Jack Grealish, who was on target again uh, against Southampton last weekend with Ollie Watkins, who also found the net. But Arsenal have, have started to tighten things up a little bit. Um, they got that 1-0 that win away at Manchester United last weekend, their first away win against the fellow Big Six team since 2015. The two previous games, they'd lost 1-0 away at Man City and 1-0 at home to Leicester. So there haven't been a huge amount of goals in their matches. Um, I think they'll take that sort of sense of solidity into this game uh, and I can see them winning. Uh, and you can get odds of 3.25 on Oddspedia of Arsenal winning this game to nil. That seems uh, pretty effective with uh, Villa's form. Um, pretty disappointing at the moment. Um, okay, well, that's all this weekend's action. In terms of uh, accumulator of the weekend, uh, Tom, what do you have for us? So my uh, ACA selection for this week is Southampton, Chelsea, Tottenham and Arsenal. Um, I know I've backed Liverpool to beat City, but I'm not that confident in that prediction. Um, but certainly I think, I think Chelsea, Tottenham and Arsenal, given their form, um, you know, and, and given the fact that their playing teams, you'd expect them to be a, a pretty solid bets. And, and Southampton, have, as they've shown in recent weeks, um, are a really dangerous team. Newcastle, quite a, quite porous opponents. Um, so I'd, I'd stick them on that list as well. Uh, yeah, you can get odds of 5.6 on Southampton, Chelsea, Spurs and Arsenal for this weekend. Uh, yeah, £10 on that gets you £56, which will be a lovely way to uh, round off your weekend and uh, before we step into lockdown. <laughs> um, okay, well, Tom, thank you very much for uh, that insight. And it's been a great help and I uh, wish you luck with your betting and I'll, I'll speak to you again soon. My pleasure and, and you with yours. Cheers. Well, there we have it. Another exciting weekend of Premier League action for us all to look forward to. We've tipped wins for Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs and Liverpool, but more problems at the bottom for the likes of West Brom and also Fulham. If you've backed any of our tips this weekend, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed this show, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. Eduardo will be back next week for your next show. But from me, I wish you all the best of luck for a weekend of betting.